Kevin Dragato, if you are present, I have a question for you. Yes, what can I do for you? The chat is disabled. That is not our policy. Can you correct that, please? This is Dawn, I can do that for you. Thank you. Can you see it now? Yes, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. I got that all taken care of for you, Anne. Thank you. That is the kind of fast response I like to have from all of our team, <laughs> elected officials and otherwise. That's great. Thank you. And I will be your secretary this evening. So. Hi, Harley. How was your day? Busy. <laughs> Running around sure. out at the, out at the yeah. land, you know, trying to get some gardening in. I didn't get much done. But <laughs> I hope you weren't gardening at the landfill, were you? No, no. Just had some <laughs> stuff to get rid of and want to get my tomatoes in. And we had frost the last four days. Yeah, so. I know. I'll tell you, I got this so far this season and Mother's Day and for my birthday, I've received plants I know nothing about from my four-year-old granddaughter. And uh, so far I've killed one. Um, and the other one is not looking great. I, I think they're, um, I don't know. I just don't know anything about lavender trees. I, I, I don't know. So it's gonna be interesting to see. I'm not going to try to draw it to her attention. Let's just say <laughs> those just suddenly weren't around anymore. Yeah, well, I kept everything in the garage just because <clears throat> We kept getting frost. So. It looks like it might be behind us, though. Har yeah. Harley, as long as you're offering, I have 80 uh, plants I just received from the state of Iowa. If you want to head on over, I have the shovels. I just need the, uh, the back. What kind of plants? What kind of deal? You can, uh, you can buy them from uh, the state of Iowa. You can buy bushes, like bare root stuff, for next to nothing. I have some stuff coming from the Arbor Day Foundation to plant some trees. Hello, Jay. Good afternoon, Supervisor McDonough and Supervisor Potoff. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Good. How's Jay today? Good. Generally good. I got a little different computer here, but uh, yeah, doing well. Thank you. Good. I'm going to just wait a moment or two. I think we're going to have some more folks join us. Um, we have uh, 34 participants at this point, but I'm suspecting if we um, wait a minute or so, we'll probably have some more people rally in, a lot of interest in our topic. up to 36 participants. Okay, well, while we wait for some more people to join us, um, I'll go ahead and call the Board of Supervisors uh, for Dubuque County into session on Friday, May 14th, 2021 at 4.31 um, for a uh, special meeting called um, late yesterday. And um, at this time, I'm going to um, 
allow for public comment. This agenda was published in Rush, and as we all know, we always have our meetings begin with public comment. Um, and so I would extend that to, to those of us who have joined us if they wish to um, make a public comment, they can use this opportunity to do so. If they want to participate, they can, um, on the reactions button, you can raise your hand. You can also um, enter a comment in the chat and we would um, notify, you know, see you that way or give a wave on video camera if anyone wishes to address the board about any issue relating to the mask mandate. We have um, Katie Jones, if you would like to, um, either you're clapping or you're giving me a wave. Katie, can you unmute yourself here? Yeah. There you are, good afternoon. Good afternoon, I'm doing both. I'm clapping for you guys and <laughs> waving at you. <laughs> a, support, a very supportive member of the Board of Health. Welcome, Katie. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I respect that you guys called this meeting tonight with um, all the changes that we've recently have with the CDC, but I do um, want to just bring into perspective to the position that this also puts the schools and the school districts in. So the, the majority of the children, especially, I mean, I know that the Pfizer has been improved for the 12 to 15 year olds now as well, but they will not be fully vaccinated before the end of the year. Um, and they don't fall under the lines of the vaccinated group who no longer need to wear masks indoors. So I think it's very important that we take a look at the position that we would be putting the schools and the school district in on keeping everyone safe in a learning environment. So I just wanted to add that two cents. And um, I know it's not black and white anymore um, with the mask mandate. And I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, returning things to normal, but I just want to be smart about it and not push things ahead, ahead of when they should be. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, Katie. And and I was intending um, to open up to the board of health members in particular. Okay. So I'm glad you jumped in, and and you know I would welcome some discussion with our board of health members. I know you have a meeting on Wednesday night. Um, we have um, um, also, if I might, um, in the chat box, um, Marcel did indicate that um, if he wants to be unmuted. And I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Marcel. Okay, and I go by Mr. K. Mr. K, um, and, and just identify yourself to our sure. audience here tonight. So I'm Marcel Kalkutsky, I'm Principal Beckman Catholic High School in Dyersville. So to, um, to, to Katie's point, I'm not sure if she's aware, um, the schools received notification about 2.45 this afternoon from the Iowa Department of Public Health of some changes related to COVID as well. Um, so I have that notice right here. So I'm just gonna try to be verbatim so I don't summarize. Um, what we've been now advised as schools in terms of guidance from IDPH is that COVID is to be um, approached like other child illnesses. And so the guidance for school and child care settings as of this afternoon, including quarantine guidance is to recommend that while COVID positive and symptomatic children should be excluded, exposed children should no longer be required to stay home regardless of mask usage. Moreover, when there's a positive case, and parents should be given information around exposure to COVID-19 in order to make their own informed decisions regarding risk. To that end, while we acknowledge that some parents may want their child to continue to wear a, a cloth face covering for reasons that make sense for their family or that child's individual health condition, we urge schools and child care settings to provide parents and students with the option to make their own decision about mask usage. And there's additional paragraphs there. So School, the guidance that we've been operating under school since about October 1st was wearing masks, reduce the number of students needing to quarantine because in those close contact situations, if you were following IDPH guidance, 
then those students could stay in school and you monitored for symptoms. With these changes that came out late this afternoon, it's now saying that even in a close contact situation, only the student who's positive would need to remain at home. So I don't know if that impacts any of those things that, you know, that's gonna impact us at schools, whether or not we follow the, these pieces of guidance, but most of us as schools have been following what um, the incident management team has provided us with the great, great work that they've done in partnership with us. And we've been following what we've received from IDPH. And you're with the Beckman School District, the Beckman Schools, right? Correct. Yep. I'm the principal at Beckman Catholic. So I can't speak for the other schools. I can't speak for Dubuque County or Western Dubuque or even my colleagues at Aquin, Xavier or the others. Um, but we would be looking in terms of what we've been asked to follow all along is we follow the guidance that we're given and um, from the county, but we also follow what we get from the Department of Public Health. Very good. Thank you for, uh, for sharing that information. We received it as well um, after four o'clock this afternoon. So uh, appreciate that. It's, it's things still being digested. So um, um, do, do we have any other members of the public who wish to speak? And I do intend to ask the Board of Health members to, to speak as well if they wish. I see no one further from the public who wishes to speak. So I would um, like to open it up to the, um, the Board of Health. If you have comments you'd like to make, I know you're intending to meet on Wednesday, but it would help, I think, give us information before uh, we begin our discussion, just to set forth kind of what the Board of Health is doing. Tom Beshin, the chair of the Board of Health, um, has his hand raised and I would welcome um, comments and insight from you, Tom. Thank you. Chair, Chair McDonough, uh, I would offer that, uh, you know, this, this change from the CDC came about very, very recently. The Board of Health has not had an opportunity to review it. We are, we have committed to review the status of the mask mandate on Wednesday the 19th. And I would ask the Board of Supervisors to honor that process and allow us to propose a recommendation to you. I, I would also add that the, you know, the guidance from the, from the CDC now says that anyone who has been fully vaccinated can go without a mask. That's the minority of the people in this county. Still approximately 55% of the people in Dubuque County have not been vaccinated. I think we owe it to those people to continue the protection that this, uh, this process offers. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Tom. Are there other members? Diane, welcome, if you'd like to um, participate. Thank you. Dawn must have unmuted me. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for letting me speak, Chair McDonough. I guess what I'd like to say is the um, with the CDC releasing these new guidelines yesterday, there's still a lot of gray area and they were addressing them already yesterday afternoon after IDPH and all of the health de departments were asking for clarification on many of those issues. So there may be more. In fact, I know that there's more that is coming out from the CDC. And if you notice, the guidelines from the IDPH today do not follow the CDC's guidelines. The CDC, as of last night, had stated that children will still need to continue wearing a mask if they are um, over three years of age, three years of age and older. Um, the reasoning is that they can still transmit and they can still get COVID and some of them are dying and some of them are sick. Okay, the other thing also is, and we have to go back to this, is that the majority of the population in Dubuque County are not vaccinated yet. And with that, we can again get a surge and more shutdowns in the future. If um, people totally unmask and start gathering in large groups, which this season is, is starting, it's just starting, um, where in the spring and the summer, you, there's large events that are planned where people will not be able to maintain the six foot of distance. And so what people heard yesterday, I'm afraid, is that you, can, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. 
but that is not the guidelines from the, from the CDC. If you if you take a listen to Dr. Walensky, how she reported that yesterday, that she did not say everyone take a mask off. What they're doing is they're trying to get individuals and in, that are refusing to get vaccinated. They're trying to encourage them to get vaccinated so that they can join the rest of us. I will still continue to wear a mask out of respect for those that have not been vaccinated and the vulnerable, vulnerable children in our population. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. I, I know there are other members of the Board of Health. I'm not going to call on anyone specifically, but others that have joined us. And I appreciate in response to our contacts with you that you have, um, you have joined us um, to show support and be part of this process. Appreciate that very much. Note that our newest member, Amy Crow Sunleaf, is present with us. I, um, very good. We have also received an, a report from our incident management team um, that was sent to the Board of Supervisors and um, folks here wouldn't have the advantage of that specifically. Um, Dawn, is it possible for you to screen share that? So we'll give folks a moment to kind of digest what the incident management team is giving us for advice um, in advance of our meeting today. Again, these things are all being done, you know, quickly in response to the last minute notice um, of our meeting today. So, you know, basically, I think, again, looking at, um, I, I find point in bullet number one, since this is a county health ordinance, evaluation and recommendation from the Board of Health should be considered before decisions are made by the supervisors. Um, and then referencing that the Board of Health members were appointed by the supervisors for their experience and knowledge in health related topics, and that the Board of Health relies on the incident management team's data research and suggestions, as well as, of course, their own professional experience and personal experience when discussing health concerns for all of Dubuque County residents. Um, I think it's noteworthy, Patrice notes that there's uh, again, I think not simple answers to um, changes and how that would go forward. So um, encouraging us to continue to work with the Board of Health um, on this matter. So um, Patrice, I know you're present and I don't know if there's anything else you wish to add to um, the statement from the incident management team or something else that, that um, I should be drawing attention to. Can you hear me, Ann? All right, yes. Chair McDonough? Okay. Yes, Patrice, I hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I know, and again, this is from the entire instant management team. Um, as all of the comments were made with the Board of Health, um, I would say that I agree with all of them. Um, and also one of our concerns is we just, we're not aware of what the variant situation will be. We know that some of the variants are quite easily transmitted. So again, anything that we can do to continue with our mask mandate until we can get more individuals vaccinated, to me, um, I just think that would be protecting and overseeing the majority of the health for the residents of Dubuque County. But thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak. Thank you. And I had a, a comment in chat from, um, I think from Katie Jones. Yes, Katie, did you want to add to the conversation? Yes, thank you, uh, Chair McDonough. I just wanted uh, to point out as well that, um, you know, we're hearing about these variants um, that continue, you know, the virus grows stronger and it can be more deadly, more transmissible. But if the virus doesn't have any person or host to infect, then it cannot continue to mutate or grow stronger or grow more deadly. So by unmasking everyone, we are putting also that more at risk as well by allowing more hosts, even if say majority are children um, and maybe children don't have, uh, you know, they don't get as sick with 
the virus as much as adults do, but it's still allowing them to mutate. So I just thought that was something important to think about as well. Katie, do you know when is the last date that school is being held? When do your kiddos get out for the summer? Yep, June, June 4th is the last day. Okay. And I think that's also the case in Western Dubuque as well. I know are that we was... still in, Are we in public comment or is this back and forth? You can ask questions. It's the board. I'm just trying to clarify. Okay. So Sure. Go ahead are, and ask your questions. No, 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 I don't have a question. I'm asked the question I have for you, the chair. Are we still in public comment? I didn't have any other members of the public that wanted to speak. So I was asking the Board of Health to participate. So there are members of the public and also members of our Board of Health. So are we still in public comment or not? Sure, if someone would like to make a comment, they are welcome to raise their hand. Thank you. We can do this here or do it in discussion or in- well, I'm fine with public comment, but public comment usually is not back and forth with the supervisors and the public, it's listening. And then we have conversations. So that's kind of where I was unclear on where we were in the meeting. Right, and so in the meeting, we are at the part of talking to the Board of Health. So I guess they can have back and forth with us. If you'd like to engage with any of those members of the Board of Health, please do so. I have no questions at this point for the Board of Health. Harley, do you have any questions for the members of the Board of Health? No, I don't. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. So then I guess what I'd like to also do is read a comment from um, another member of our Board of Health who couldn't be here. Um, and he's uh, actually out of the office and not in town. So uh, our Dr. Hendrik Schultz wrote to me last evening and said, um, these are his words, I do not understand at this point where the need to rush to a decision tomorrow by the Board of Supers comes from when we have an upcoming Board of Health meeting next Wednesday to discuss and give recommendations. The whole process leaves me with the impression that the recommendations worked on by all Board of Health members over the past weeks are irrelevant to the Board of Supervisors. If you as a board are already set on a decision, regardless of the input that healthcare professionals and scientists can offer you, you do not need a Board of Health to advise you. I would very much prefer to stay in the sequence of having a Board of Health meeting first and give recommendations thereafter to the Board of Supervisors before they make a decision. Do we have discussion amongst the Board of Supervisors about this? Yes, I have a, a comment, if the time's right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, during the, the whole pandemic, you know, I've stated many times that, uh, you know, we want to follow the science, uh, follow CDC guidelines, and uh, many times follow the Board of Health. And, uh, you know, when the CDC and the Board of Health said we should have a mass mandate, I voted three times to support that mass mandate. The only supervisor that can say that. Three times I supported for the mass mandate. And so now that the CDC has reviewed the science, five to six months worth of data, millions and millions, tens of millions of people that have been vaccinated, uh, they have come to the decision based upon the science and their recommendation that masks are not needed for those people that are fully vaccinated. And so for me, the decision's easy. And on behalf of the 44,000 people in Dubuque County, those residents, those citizens that are fully vaccinated, we should end the mass mandate today. Supervisor Potoff, is there anything you wish to add? Well, I've got thrown in this in January. Um, I voted in February to ex extend the mandate and uh, part of that was based on the Board of Health 
recommendation that uh, once the most vulnerable were vaccinated, the uh, mandate could be removed. Uh, at the time, they're thinking maybe 70, 75% of the 65 and older would be probably the best reach we would have. But we're up to 89% of the most vulnerable. We have 62% of the population 16 and over that are vaccinated. I think it's time to uh, move, move forward with it also. And uh, we need to respect each other's decisions to wear or not to wear the mask. I mean, some people have medical conditions that prevent them from getting vaccinated. Some people have medical conditions that prevent them from wearing masks. Uh, but we need to come together as a community and we gotta, we have to get back to where we were, but we have to do it carefully. Uh, rescinding the mask mandate, I mean, or changing it to a strong recommendation. Uh, I think businesses will still have the option of, you know, requiring masks if you want to enter the business, just because, well, most of the businesses are in the city, but even county businesses, if, uh, they want to continue, you know, having people wear the mask, that's fine. It's, it should be that business owner's personal decision. Yeah, I appreciate the Board of Health's opinions on this. Uh, I think we need to be in step with the CDC rulings. Uh, we can't keep moving the goalposts down the road like we have in the past. And, and for me, often it is about process. But this was called as an emergency special meeting. And what I have learned in my hours of looking into this is that there are still gray undetermined things to be decided with a board of health that is meeting on Wednesday to sift through all of the information. We are missing key information from Dr. Hendrick Schultz, for instance, which personally I think brought us the mandate back in November. His advice and his contact with our mayors brought us that mandate and full community understanding. But, you know, Harley, I would say to you, um, there's a time when a citizen board works for a board of supervisors, and yet maybe that citizen board doesn't really feel like they're being consulted or they're being considered, right? And I think you know a time when you felt that way about the ATV UTV committee when it felt like, oh, wow, you know, they really had me do a lot of work and where are we? And, and that's kind of where I feel. I, I feel like I'm back to that moment again where I have a board of health that has invested hundreds and hundreds of hours, an incident management team that works night and day. And they have asked us to give them the space they need to process this. I don't hear them saying that they're going to extend this endlessly. I think they want to end this in a manner that is in accordance with the guidelines from the CDC, from the IDPH, as they can learn them and process them. So I would say to my colleagues that if we take this hurried discussion and we take this action today, we are not going to allow for any guidance from our Board of Health. Does that send a message we want to send? We are not going to follow and allow any guidance from emergency services, our incident management team. Is that where we wish to be? We also don't allow for any consultation with our school partners. I have been in contact with schools in Western Dubuque and locally, and they feel that the message is being misconstrued by us. We are jumping on this like cowboys instead of letting them be in work in consultation with the incident management team and the health board. And then I also think that it doesn't allow for us to do something that would be awesome, which is to get a final simple answer. The city of Dubuque has reached out to us to work on a coordinated end date of the city of Dubuque's mandate and the county mass mandate. And as we know, whatever we do here today, is it going to affect the city of Dubuque mask mandate. They have to go through their own procedures. We don't decide that somebody coming to Hy-Vee and Asbury tomorrow has to wear a mask or no. 
So we miss that opportunity. And do we value that? So for me, I think citizens are benefit. They benefit from a well thought out decision with complete information with our partners. So that would be my purpose to say, as I tried to with our team, this meeting I think is a little early. We can do this all again, Thursday, Friday of next week and the following, depending upon what our local our local expe expertise tells us and directs us to do. We should at least have value in listening to them. That would be my point to my colleagues here today. I definitely would support many of the things that you said, Supervisor McDonough, as far as process and, and getting those involved. And I think I've tried to do my best job over my, my term in doing that. Um, I think I can speak with confidence that I've supported uh, many citizen groups and certainly the Board of Health um, more than anyone. And so uh, I definitely appreciate that and understand that. I think the other thing to understand that these are, once again, unprecedented times. And I don't know if anyone 48 hours ago anticipated the CDC would do this, including those that are you know, talking heads on the TV and all the way up to the President of the United States. I think he was surprised. So you know, it's, it's something that's been put in our lap. And so this being such a personal issue, this also being a contentious issue with a large group of our population, I think it's unique circumstances where, you know, as a Republic, we're elected to make decisions. We're elected to lead. We're elected sometimes to make very difficult and decisive decisions. And I think this is one of those times and I will be more than happy to listen and engage in additional dialogue with the Board of Health and or any other groups post today's meeting. Um, and if there's things that I'm learning that we need to change course, we will. And we have done that. We've voted, I voted three times in favor of the mass mandate. You voted in three times for various stages of the mass mandate. Um, Harley's relatively new. So I think it's, a, it's, it's the time that we need to, to be decisive and be responsive and, be, and, and we need to make a decision now. And so I wish it wasn't rushed. I wish they didn't just spring this on to us, but that's what occurred. And for those residents uh, that have been fully vaccinated, I think this is their reward. And I think we should List our, lift our mass mandate. And as Supervisor Potoff said, it doesn't restrict other public and or private entities from stating their own policies. And so they still have the ability to, to implement those, whether it's a grocery store or whether it's Sunnycrest, they have the opportunity to, to still, vote, still publish and or continue to basically administer a different policy. But, but I strongly believe today is the time to, to list that, lift them up. But this discussion began with me at 410 yesterday afternoon. Agreed. I heard about it at two o'clock. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I know, wish it was. I wish right. they would have done a lot of things different. So I, I, I think, you know, our, our job isn't to react to surprise and to take immediate action when there are other professionals still examining the information. You, you should get valued opinions. That's what I've asked to be joining us today. And so, you know, the need and the urgency to act isn't being mirrored by other communities, as far as I can tell. So most of you don't have a mass mandate, and it's the CDC. I mean, so I mean, the CDC—they've been studying this for for months. I'm sure they spent billions of dollars related to the vaccine and how it works, and it worked. I, it's I wonderful. Don't think, I don't think anyone has spent more time on this than our incident management team. Right. Up front, close and personal. The CDC probably has, but uh, in total, yeah. I, I love our incident management team and I love our board of health, but I, I have a lot, a lot of confidence in the CDC. I have less confidence in the Iowa Department of Public Health, by the way, over the last 12 months. And so I, we have, as a board, not agreed with them because they're not saying to have a mass mandate. Never have. Never, we fought them all the way on this. And so, you know, we're an outlier related to the state of Iowa and I just think it's, I think it's just, a, it's, it's time and it's good responsive government um, to, to make decisions sometimes with uh, the guidance and the clear direction that we've been given from the federal government. And, and that's where I, I believe we are today. So I'm prepared to make that motion when we're, when we're done with the discussion.
Harley, do you have anything else you want to add? I certainly would entertain a motion. There's nothing I can do. I mean, that that's fine if you want to make a motion. That's no problem. I, uh, <clears throat> I would really like, would have liked to have the Board of Health had the meeting prior to this just because I want to work with the Board of Health. Uh, I know there was a time there was a little bit of a rift uh, and I don't want to start that all over. Uh, Dr. Schultz, obviously you read his letter, but he was uh, the one that brought up the most vulnerable being, being uh, vaccinated and removing the mandate. We just, like I said, we keep, can't keep moving the goalpost for these people that are vaccinated. Um, I saw there was a, just a chat from May Hinch and that Polk County may have uh, rescinded theirs today too. But, um, that's all but, I have this yeah, time. And, it, and they may be with, even with their Board of Health agreeing. You know, we're in, we're in that awkward situation where we don't, we haven't processed all the information from all of our partners. So, um, you know, that's, I'm, that's where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna err on the side of giving it a bit more time to hear from the people we've asked to do the work. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it is, it is an awkward time and has been through this whole thing, you know? And so if you're looking for, you know, legal and or partners, you ask the state of Iowa, they'll say you didn't have any authority to do a mass mandate. And that came, I think, even from the attorney general Tom Miller had stated that. You ask a city and they're saying, no, we're, we're sovereign. We can do what we want. And you can't tell us what to do, Mr. and Mrs. County. And then if you're a county, you're like, hey, let's do these mandates for, for all citizens and all incorporated areas. And so it's, it's, I think it's, it's, un, it's unresolved law and hopefully it probably will be. It, I don't think any of these are gonna go to court. And so it's just governments making decisions. So. I believe in our decision to rescind the mass mandate covers all of Dubuque County. That's just Jay Wickham as a supervisor, not a lawyer, not a Supreme Court justice, but I think that's that's where we are with the guidance that the, the federal government gave us. And I note that the, um, a friend, uh, the mayor of Cascade ended the mandate for all of Cascade um, at their meeting last week, I think. Well, maybe it was Monday night. The days all blend. Maybe it was this week. But he just, and he called me today to say, and just so you know, it's over in Cascade. I said, well, I mean, if you've been out in the county doing any grocery shopping, the compliance with our county mass mandate literally has been over quite a long time. <laughs> quite a long time. The county's been done with wearing masks. So I think what we're, what we're, what we're really faced with here, I, for me, is engaging the people who still are, who are still in the trenches the incident management team, the board of health, the school districts, the, our partners who brought us here, the city of Dubuque. If there's a way to not rush this in 24 hours, that would be my hope. So, but, um, you know, no ill will certainly to um, other supervisors who feel differently. Sorry, Ann, I think I froze up. I didn't hear what your uh, comment was. Oh, I can't do that again, Harley. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. All of a sudden, everything froze. I'm like, oh, oh I got a problem. With everything Supervisor Wickham has said over his whole entire term. <laughs> I think what I said was ditto. Doesn't that seem in character? Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. No, honestly, I'm sure I'm restating what I what I said before, Harley. Which is for okay. me, it's about working with the partners. So I know Gil, going into this and going into the mass mandate and going into many things, we we had long discussions, whether it's the mass mandate, whether it was the vaccines, whether it was testing, um, possibly going out, we don't have to have as, as thorough discussions, at least kind of that's, that's my vantage point. Um, so uh, in light of that, I'll make a motion to repeal the resolution 21-047 to end the mask mandate effective immediately. Is there a second? I will second that. We have a motion and a second to repeal the mask mandate. All in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed will indicate nay and I am a nay. Is there any further discussion among the supervisors on this issue? 
or have we concluded our business here today? Are we going to uh, make a recommendation, or I shouldn't say recommendation, or uh, how should I say it, that we would support a strong recommendation for wearing masks yet? Um, it wouldn't you be would mandated, but we'd have a strong recommendation from the Board of Supervisors. It's a, that's actually in the resolution, at least the draft that I got late today. Um, again, another four o'clock thing. So I got a late resolution that says that if you want to make any of that be more official orally, please do so. I wasn't quite sure if you wanted that brought up or not. That's why. I... I mean, I don't think I don't think our work is entirely done, you know, on, on obviously COVID-19. And so we've got, uh, you know, a lot of things that we can do to, to continue uh, with mitigation, continue with education and, uh, you know, see if we can continue to help the, the community. So um, by no means am I declaring victory and this is over. I just think this is one step that, that, that was needed to be taken today. And so uh, I'd be a strong advocate of, of continuing to have recommendations, additional educational outreaches, additional campaigns related to vaccinations and related to uh, you know CDC guidance. Right, I've been told that uh, if in light of our actions, the Board of Health will likely be canceling their meeting for Wednesday. So if we're wishing to give them further instruction, probably starting over there. Um, the resolution itself, if you want to take a look at that, that's uh, you know we have made a, we have taken a vote to end the mask mandate by a two to one vote. If you look at the resolution, that would be, um, you know, is that the resolution that we're going to sign? That's a good question. I saw that. And so um, I'm not opposed to, you know, authorizing the chair to, to sign that resolution. But my specific motion was just to, under the direction of, uh, I think the county attorney was to basically repeal the previous resolution that, that made the mass mandate go into effect. Uh, supervisors, if I may, my understanding was that we needed to have a resolution to repeal the resolution. So we, this would be the resolution that would be signed. Yeah, and I just think that uh, after the, the all capitals uh, sentence, the Board of Supervisors repeals resolution 21-047, which approved the Board of Health resolution from February 24th, 2021, which imposed a face covering mandate in Dubuque County. And so this resolution is repealing 21-047, which I made a motion and was second and passed. So um, I'm comfortable with this resolution. And if we need additional action to have the chair sign this, I'm happy to take that. We will need that action for the chair to sign. I will make a motion to have the sign chair the excuse me <laughs> the chair sign the resolution uh, presented on the screen related to the ending of the mass mandate. And I will second. We have a motion to second authorizing the chair and directing the chair to sign the resolution um, ending the mask mandate and um, indicating that. We strongly recommend that individuals who are not fully vaccinated continue to follow the mask wearing and social distancing guidelines from the Iowa Department of Public Health and the, and the CDC. All in favor say aye. 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 And I am nay. Um, I think that concludes the business before the board um, at this time. And so we would go again to public comments as posted and published on the agenda which gives time for citizens to address with us uh, matters of concern that are not on the agenda. If anyone wishes to address the board about those matters, you may do so at this time, um, virtually raising your hand, uh, enabling uh, the video, giving a wave, entering a comment in chat. And we'll wait a moment to see if anyone wishes to do that. I do not see anyone indicating any of those functions. Um, therefore, I would be looking for a motion to adjourn until our meeting on Monday. 
I will make a motion to adjourn until Monday. And I will second that. Motion is second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. We are adjourned. Be well, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everyone who's yeah, participating. Have a good weekend, Ann, Jay, everyone. You as well.